All right, greetings everyone. Welcome to the second part of the video for section 5.4. Uh, we're going to continue on doing some work with uh, the other trig functions beyond sine and cosine, and then also uh, start to do one of people's favorite things that we do in a trig class. I won't spoil the surprise for you though. All right, so let's look at this problem. So we're given that the tangent of some angle theta, and we're not told what that angle is, equals 3 fourths, and that theta is in the third quadrant. We're asked to find the values of the other five trigonometric functions for theta. So by the other five, we're talking about all those other ones that were listed in our first video, so sine, cosine, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. Now, uh, along with a lot, or what has been true of a lot of the problems that we've done so far, uh, a first step here would be to draw a picture so we can see what's going on. So here is my coordinate axis. Here is my circle. And then I've got an angle theta that's going to start as they always do. They're on the positive part of the horizontal axis. And then we're rotating around until we're into the third quadrant, which is the bottom left one here. So we'll be working down there. And by the way, just because I don't think I've gone over it yet, just as a reminder of the way the quadrants work, this is number one here, this is number two, this is number three, and this is number four. So we also count counterclockwise there. Okay, so our angle theta ends up there in the third quadrant. And um, we are told then again that the tangent of that angle is 3 over 4. Now recall that one of the things we learned about the tangent of an angle is that it is equal to the ratio y over x. Which leads us to believe then that this point right here where that uh, terminal side of the angle intersects the circle should be the point 3, 4. However, keep in mind we are in the third quadrant, right? So we have to think about what are the signs on the x and y values there? Well, for the x values, we're working on this part of the horizontal axis, which hopefully you see that that would give us negative values for x. And then for the y values, we're working on this part of the vertical axis, which you would ho hopefully also agree with me, gives us negative values there. So we're actually looking at the point negative three over negative four. And sorry, I have those switched around. I apologize, it should be negative four comma negative three, since three is the y value, or negative three is the y value. And notice if we plug that into our tangent, um, uh, tangent ratio here, if we do negative three over negative four, well negative over negative gives us a positive, so we get the positive three force that we started with, right? So that shows us that this works. Okay. <clears throat> Now, the question is, how are we going to find the other trig ratios, right? So we need to find sine of the angle, cosine. Uh, where do you have tangents? So then we need cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And hopefully you recall we had ratios for these, right? So we had that sine was y over r, cosine was x over r, cosecant was r over y, secant was r over x, and then cotangent was x over y. And we can actually find cotangent, right, because we know the value for x and y, so the x value is negative 4, the y value is negative 3, so negative 4 over negative 3 gives us positive 4 thirds. But what are we missing here to be able to do the rest of them? That's right, we need the value for r. So how are we gonna do that? Well, recall that r 
is this length right here from the center of the circle to the outside. And um, that's the value for R. And there's, so there's a couple of different ways we could go about this. I apologize, it's not working. It's the value for R. So first of all, we know that the other end of the radius there, that's the point zero, zero. So we could use the distance formula to find the distance between zero, zero and negative four, negative three. We could also approach it this way. Notice that if I drop a line here to the, vert to the horizontal axis there, it gives me a right angle. And now I've got a right triangle here. And notice that in that right triangle, well, the length of this side right here is negative four, since that's going to be along the x-axis, so that'll be our x value. Length of this side down here will be negative three, since that is parallel to the vertical axis, so that'll be our y value. And so if I blow this up over here on the right, what we're looking at is a right triangle where again, the length of this side is negative four, the length of this side is negative three, we need to find the value r here. And how can we do that? Right, going back to stuff we learned at the beginning of this chapter, we can use the Pythagorean theorem, which will tell us that if we take negative four squared plus negative three squared, that'll be equal to r squared, and then we can work this out to solve for r. So we have 16, plus nine, notice those are both positives, right? Negative four squared is negative four times negative four, which is positive 16. Negative three squared gives us positive nine because negative three times negative three is positive nine equals r squared. And we do 16 plus nine, which is 25 equals r squared. We can solve for r by taking the square root on both sides. And normally, remember, we take a square root, we get a plus or minus. So here we end up with r equals plus or minus the square root of 25, which is five. But also recall the length of our radius will always be positive. So we're actually just going to take the plus there. So now we have that r equals five. And so now we can fill in all of these other values over here. Okay, so for sine, we would do y over r, so the value for y was negative three, so this will be negative three over five. Cosine will be x over r, so this will be a value for x, which is negative four over the radius, which is five. Uh, cosecant is going to be r over y, so that'll be five over negative three, or negative five thirds. And then secant would be r over x, that would be five over negative four. Okay, so that's super messy. So let me rewrite this out just so we can see exactly what we've got here. Okay, so again, our value for sine <clears throat> was y over r, so that was negative three over five. For cosine, we had x over r, so that would be negative four over five. For cosecant, that was r over y, so five over negative three, which is the same as negative five thirds. Secant was r over x, so that'd be five over negative four, or negative four fifths. And then finally, cotangent of theta, which will be x over y, so negative four over negative three, which just gives us positive four thirds. Okay, and there we have our answers. All right, I'm actually going to leave it there for now. You'll have to wait for the next video to see that special surprise, that thing that everyone loves in trig class. So I'm sorry to keep you waiting, but I'll see you in the next video. All right, thank you for watching.